So now it's time. Here is your first look at a retail and fake pair of the Nike Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found. Can you tell any difference between these two? Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I have another comparison video for you between two pairs of the Nike Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found. Yes, this is the one everyone's been waiting for. So I'm not going to mess around, I'm going to get straight into the comparison. I'm going to start with the boxes. So the first difference to note is to take a look at the lid on both of the boxes. So if I give you a close up from above, you can see the box is actually slightly more faded on the fake one compared to the retail one and the orange color itself is different to the retail one. So on the retail one, it's a more rich orange, almost a darker orange compared to the fake one where the box lid almost looks a little bit faded and you can see where the speckled dots are on the Nike logo itself. These are much thicker and faded on the fake one compared to the retail one. I would actually say the fake one is a little bit dented just from the transport, but the retail one is in perfect condition. But in terms of the actual sizing of the boxes, they are exactly the same size. I'll just say the condition's a little bit worse on the fake one compared to the retail one. Now, if we spin the boxes around, take a closer look at the labeled side, we can see differences here. And this is quite a big one, so pay close attention. So if you look at the side where the label and sizing is, you can see it comes with two yellow sales stickers. These are actually stuck onto the box and you can peel them off. However, if you look at the fake one compared to the retail one, you can see the sizing and print of these sales stickers is very different from retail to fake. On the fake one, they've gone for a much larger sales sticker compared to the retail one. And in terms of the color and the font and text and everything like that, it's completely different from fake to retail. So this is a clear telltale sign that the fakes haven't got right just yet, but I do expect them to update this. But if you've got your pair now, just pay close attention to this detail because it's an easy telltale sign between the retail and the fake one. Also, if you take a look at the label, which has the official sizing with the US size, the Euro size, and the UK size, you can see difference in the font and text size here. So specifically, if you look at the color text below the color code itself, you can see where it says varsity red, black sale, muslin color. You can see that this text font size is very different from fake to retail. So pay close attention to these labels and I would definitely pay close attention to the sale stickers because these are very different from retail to fake and quite an easy spot between the two boxes. But like I say in pretty much every video, nobody really wants me to talk about the boxes for the entire time. So we'll open them up, take a closer look at the shoes. So we'll open up the fake one first. As you can see, the shoes come completely exposed and they do actually have the receipt attached here on the inside. Well, they seem to have two of them but like that green and a yellow one. And then if we open up the retail one here, you can see that the receipt is on top, which is actually just a yellow one. There is no green one here and the paper covers the shoes itself. So now we'll take a closer look at the paper. So here from the close up, you can see clear differences between the papers on the retail one and the fake one. If you look at the fake one, you can see the paper is actually a more white color compared to the retail one where it has that more gray faded hint to it. As you can see on the fake one, the Nike text and graphics are stand out a lot more against this white paper beneath than they do on the retail one. On the retail one, they've done a great job at making it look pretty much vintage and old. Whereas on the fake one, it just doesn't really look like that. It's just a little bit too new in a way, but it just doesn't look the same as the retail one, which you can see from the side by side comparison. Just as I'm unpacking the shoes from the boxes, I've also noticed that the paper on the retail one is much thicker than it is on the fake one. The fake one is really thin and flimsy. So before we get into the shoes, we'll take a look at the receipts that come with these. Obviously, these are just a little accessory that come with the shoe just to make it a little bit special. But taking a closer look at both of these, you can see clear differences between the retail and fake. So here you can see the retail one is on a yellow thick receipt from Sandy Bros. Whereas on the fake one, you can see it has a green and a yellow one. I think the green one's meant to go underneath us. So if you write on the yellow one, it does mark through to the green one. But on the retail one, it's just one sheet of paper. And if you look at the text on both of these, you can see clear differences between the actual writing and boldness of the text. So if you look at the retail one, you can see Air Jordan basketball shoes, paid cash, final sale. Whereas if you look at the fake one, you can see this part of the text looks a little bit more faded and is also different size and a little bit thicker of a pen. Also, if you look at the bottom where it says received by, you can see the name is spelt out a lot thicker and bigger on the fake receipt compared to the retail receipt. So you can see small details like this just don't match up between the retail and the fake pair. And just pay close attention to this. And from the close up, take a closer look at the receipt to see if yours matches up with the retail one to make sure yours is legit. So now it's time. Here is your first look at a retail and fake pair of the Nike Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found. Can you tell any difference between these two? So we're gonna start with the differences on the shoes now. I'm gonna take a look at the right shoe. If we take a look at the toe box area here, and I'll give you a close up of this, you can see differences between the retail and fake. 
So obviously this is meant to be based on a shoe that's been stored for a long period of time. So on the retail one, you can see the toe box has a white cracking all over it, which makes it look aged and really vintage and nice. If you look at the fake one, they've tried to replicate this, but it has nowhere near the same look and appearance as it does on the retail one. And this is quite clear to see, I hope it shows up on the close up, but you can see the cracks are much thicker and obvious on the retail one compared to the fake one. Whereas on the fake one, it just looks like it has a more texturized look. Also taking a look at the tongue of both of these shoes, although it's meant to have an aged look to it, I would say the fake one has a much more peachy color to it than it does the retail one. This is quite easy to see in studio lighting, so I hope it does show up on the camera, but it's very clear to see that the fake one's tongue is much more peachy in color compared to the retail one, which has a more vintage yellowy cream kind of vibe to it. One very obvious difference between the two, and I'm not really sure why Fake's got this wrong, is on the retail one, when you get them dead slot, they come pre-laced with both the white and the black lace at the bottom two holes, just to show you the options that you have when buying this shoe, I guess. So you can see, you can lace them up with the black or cream white laces as well. If we look at the Fake one, it just comes pre-laced with the black lace around the bottom hole, and there doesn't seem to be, oh, there is a white spare lace, but it comes, in a bag and then they also have a red one which does not happen on the retail one on the retail one it only comes with the white and black laces and they're already pre-laced in the shoe so just like the toe box area with this cracked leather if we take a look at the side of the shoe and take a look at this white leather underneath the swoosh we can see clearly here the same differences are on the toe box on the retail one you can see how cracked that leather is and it makes a huge difference to the visual appearance of the shoe whereas if you look at the fake one you can just see it looks like a texturized paint that's been added with no real cracking or aging to the leather like it looks like on the retail one. Spinning these shoes around to the back, telltale sign between a retail and fake pair is the hourglass shape of both. Here you can see that the fake one just doesn't have this correct compared to the retail one. The retail one has that classic hourglass shape, whereas the fake one, it just doesn't. It looks a bit chunky at the heel. However, with wear, the shape can vary, but on a dead stock pair, just take a closer look at this. Take a closer look at the labels on both of the tongues, because here we can see the difference between the retail and fake. So where it says Nike Air, you can see it does have an R symbol just below the Nike text. Here you can see the bottom of this R is shaped very differently from retail to fake. And it looks like the bottom two parts of the R on the fake one are kind of like fangs, whereas on the retail one, it's stitched perfectly. So there's just small mistakes like this that the fake one's made that the retail one hasn't. And just pay close attention to small little details or differences between a retail pair and a fake pair. Another difference I would actually note, but I'm not sure it's gonna show up here on the camera, is there is actually a color difference between the two with terms of the Chicago red used. I would say that the fake one has gone for a more burgundy red than the retail one, which is a classic Chicago red, but there is actually a slight color difference between the two. It's not really gonna show up on camera, I don't think, because it's actually quite hard to see in person, but when I have them side by side, I can see there is a clear difference between the two colors. Taking a look at the Air Jordan Wings logo on the side here and giving you a close up of this, there is a difference between the retail and fake. So if you look at the retail one, you can see it has a matte black Air Jordan Wings logo and has a very distinct feel to it as I run my finger over it. Whereas on the fake one, it doesn't have the same kind of matte finish to it. So when you run your finger over it, it pretty much feels exactly the same as the red leather around it. Whereas on the retail one, if you run your finger over it, it kind of gets stuck on that matte like finish of the Air Journal Wings logo. So there's a clear difference between the retail and fake. When taking a look at this black collar here and looking at that cracked black leather, you can see a clear difference between the retail and fake because this black cracked leather is a key part of the Air Jordan one lost and found. And if you look at the fake one here from the side by side, you can see it just doesn't have that same cracked appearance, just like the white parts of the shoe, the black parts are the same, it just doesn't have that cracked appearance that it does on the retail one, which is a pretty big mistake between the retail and fake and quite obvious to see if you are trying to compare. When looking at the bottom of the shoe, you know it does have that white kind of chalk-like look to the bottom of the sole. However, I would say that the retail one is much more obvious and there's a much larger amount of chalk on the bottom than there is on the fake one. But after a few wears, you won't really be able to tell the difference. So I'm just not gonna bring too much of a mention to this. It's just if both pairs are dead stock, it's quite a clear, obvious difference between the two. Now we're gonna take a look at the left shoe. And obviously the main difference is the one I pointed out earlier. The spare laces come pre-laced in the retail pair, whereas in the fake one, you can see they've come with two sets of plastic bags which is quite a big mistake to make, but that's a clear difference between the retail and fake. The final difference I'm gonna point out is pretty much standard on all Jordan 1 models. And if you take a look at the toe box area, you can see it clearly here. Here you can see the shape of the overall model towards the toe box area is different from retail to fake. Here you can see the retail one curves pretty much perfectly around the toe box, Whereas on the fake one, it has a much more boxy toe box compared to the retail one. And this is pretty much standard in terms of Jordan 1s and in terms of real versus fake. 
they don't really seem to get the shape of the toolbox pretty much ever correct or in the ones that I've had. So just pay close attention to your pair if you do have a pair in hand. And I really hope this video has helped you because this is an absolute stunning pair and I think it's gonna go up in value and I think it's gonna be one for the collectors because this pair is gorgeous and I like every little detail about it, including the receipt and the sales stickers on the box. Just think they've done an amazing job of these. And if you've got these in your collection, you're very, very lucky. But if you're trying to buy a retail pair, pay close attention to this video because I hope it has helped you if you are trying to purchase one. But thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Hope you have an amazing day.